Welcome to the Irresistible You podcast. This is the place to get a dose of empowerment to create the life you crave and deserve. I'm your host, Amy Beltran, CEO and founder of Irresistible University. Through my signature online coaching program, I teach women just like you how to ditch the body image issues, gain confidence, and lose the emotional weight to look and feel irresistible at any size. If you like this podcast, you're going to love my group coaching program, Irresistible You. If you would like to learn more about the program, including the investment, what's included, see client testimonials, and to sign up and enroll, please head over to irresistibleicing.com slash course. The link is also in the show notes. How many times have you started your weight loss journey? And somewhere within the first couple weeks, you find yourself um, beating yourself up and telling yourself that it's not working. You feel like you're putting in all the hard work, you're doing all the things you're supposed to be doing, and you're not seeing results. Or maybe the results that you would like are just too slow for you. Well, today, guys, we're going to have a fierce conversation to find out what the truth of that is. Today we're going to talk about are you really holding yourself accountable or have you created a story in your head where you're in denial about all the things that you think that you're doing. So if that is interesting to you, stay tuned because we're diving in. I um, originally didn't know if I was going to share this on the podcast because I was having a moment I was starting to have a moment where I felt like um, I felt like a hypocrite. I felt like a fraud because the last three months for me have been really challenging. Um, For those of you that don't know or you're new here, I had a baby. I had my son, my second child back at the end of October. Um, At the time of this podcast going live, he'll be three months on January 26th, and my postpartum period was very hard. I had severe complications um, where I ended up back in the hospital, and there was just a lot of things going on, and, you know, I think I had to just kind of talk about the fact that you know, my emotions got the best of me. And I know that I started using food to cope with some of the things that were going on because I was just so overwhelmed, so exhausted, so scared. Um, And honestly, just in survival mode, trying to get through the days. And It's like that whole time period right now for me is just one big blur. And I'm glad that we, even more than the regular, like the the normal postpartum newborn phase is a blur. But this was really, um, it it just was, it was a lot. It was a lot going on. And I mean, I was going to appointments two to three times a week. And it was just, there was so much happening there. And... (sighs) I started feeling like I shouldn't talk about this. Here I am in a position where I coach women to lose emotional weight, to learn how to process through their emotions, to learn how to, you know, drop all these these thoughts that they have about themselves. And here I am struggling with the same things. Now, I will admit that I'm not struggling emotionally the same way that I think I would have years ago because now I have this framework I have these tools I have these ways to self-coach myself um, and these principles in the irresistible you framework that I didn't have before but what I started noticing is that and this is why I've been feeling like absolute shit is I'm not living my own principles right now I'm just not um the weight has really taken a toll on me and it's been really hard. This I feel like is the biggest I've ever been and it's different. It's like so much weight in my stomach that's just literally hanging 
Um, and it's not going away. It's not just falling off. It's not just melting off. And it's not that my weight has ever melted off. I've never been blessed like that. I've always had to work for it. But I remember even with my daughter, which I didn't have any complications um, during or after with her. Um, and so after I had her, you know, the weight didn't fall off, but it didn't come back on either. I was able to keep it off and, and it didn't come back on. And when I had my son, my body actually was holding on to so much weight because of the preeclampsia that I had, the postpartum preeclampsia that I didn't know that I had. And so after they got that under control, I remember I dropped like over 20 pounds from the time I got home. It was insane. And over the course of the time, you know, the postpartum period, I gained like 10 pounds of that back. And I just haven't broken through that that plateau yet. And so I just want to be very honest with you guys. I am in a place where I don't like the weight. I don't like where I am physically. I don't like what I see in the mirror right now. I really don't like what I see. Um, I don't, I don't, and maybe this is my own interpretation. I don't know. I feel like this is the worst my body has ever looked. And I'm just being real with y'all. I wanted to share with you like the thoughts that actually cross my mind because even after dedicating my life to Irresistible You and doing this work, the work is never done. And I know you hear me say that all the time, but it's true because we go through different ups and downs, different iterations of the same body. And these thoughts and feelings are normal. It's all about what we do with them. And I think for me, maybe I haven't been fully ready to go all in on what it is that I need to do. And I am now because I'm going to share with you kind of what happened last night and kind of some of the things that are going on in my head and, and the realizations that I'm having. So, you know, I, I'm uncomfortable. <laughs> I am physically, utterly uncomfortable in my skin right now. You know, my stomach, it's like it didn't even go away from the pregnancy. And I, it hurts to even sit up. Like, you know, like sitting in the bed, feeding the baby, it doesn't feel comfortable. I don't feel like I'm supposed to be, like, I, I feel like I'm in the wrong body. And that feels so defeating. And I know you know what I'm saying. Like, it feels like, oh my God, how am I ever going to get this off? And so I was finding myself going through a lot of victim pity party shit where I'm just feeling bad for myself and saying this is so hard and I don't want to have to do this again. I don't want to have to lose the weight again. Here I go again. I don't fucking want to do it again. And that's the reality. I don't want to do this again. I just don't. But I also know I don't want to feel the way I'm feeling right now. I don't want to be in the body that I'm in right now. And so you get to this point where you have to pick which one do you want? Where do you want to be? And what I don't want to be is an overweight, out of shape, unhealthy mom who doesn't want to be seen and doesn't want to show up for her kids and show up for herself. I don't want to be that and I refuse to be that. And I know that if I continue the way I'm going... That's the path that I'm going to find myself on and I've been on that path before and I don't want to go back. And so it's just, there's so many things going through my head and I really felt like a fraud and a hypocrite and I'm like, I can't share this with my my listeners, I can't share this with you guys because you guys come to me for inspiration, you guys come to me to be motivated and I just have to be honest with you I haven't been able to give myself that straight up. I haven't even been able to give that to myself over the last couple of months. And it's like one day I'll be doing good. 
I'm like, and, and when I say good, it's not about food, guys. Like, I'm doing good mentally, emotionally. I'm like, I got this. You know, this is where we're at. This is what's happening. And I feel like I'm just treading water. I feel like I'm just treading water between my emotions, my schedule, my weight. And I have so much on my plate that I feel like I'm just about to like drown. I feel like I'm drowning. And the only way for me to go through this is to be real and to be honest and to share it with you guys because this journey, it never really ends. We have ups and downs, but it's a continuation. This is my life. This is my life. There's no getting to a certain place and everything goes back to normal. There's no getting to a certain place and I never have another bad thought again. It's just not how it works, but it's about knowing what to do and how to do it. And here's the thing. I have the tools. I know how to talk to myself. I know by my principles of Irresistible You, the things that I need to be doing to feel better about myself. And I'm not doing them because I just emotionally haven't been able to do it. And sometimes that's just where you're at. It's just where you're at. And so if that is where you're at, I just want you to give yourself a little bit of forgiveness and a little bit of grace. And I want you to think about what you're dealing with and what you have going on. And that there will be the time for you to do this. There will be time for you to do this. Um, But sometimes you're just not in a place where you're ready because you're drowning. You're just, you're literally in survival mode. And that was kind of where I was um, up until the end of last year, just in this survival mode. And I talked about it uh, last week on the podcast. And I want to reiterate this is that when you feel like this, when you're just, you've gained the weight and you feel like shit and you're so, and it's not even just like, oh, because I gained the weight. It's like you feel, you actually feel out of shape. You feel unhealthy. That is where I am right now. Okay. And when you feel like that and you start doing the things you need to do to eat better, to move more, you know, to even implement the irresistible you principles, you know, you're still going to feel like shit for a while. You're going to be putting in the work, putting in the reps, no pun intended, and you're still going to feel like shit for a while before you see results. So it is very easy for you to say, fuck it, I'm done, this isn't working, I don't want to do this anymore, this is hard. It's very easy to fall into that victim pity party stuff. And that's where I was finding myself, where I'm like, fuck this, like I don't want to do this anymore. I don't want to have to think about my food. I don't want to have to sit here and plan out my meals. I don't want to have to sit here And fucking look at the points of things. I don't want to do this anymore. But what's my alternative? If I take that anger and that resentment for what I have to do to take care of myself, and I just say, fuck it, I'm going to do whatever I want, well, then guess what happens? I'm going to pack on 20, 30 pounds, and then I'm really going to be miserable. And that's not what I want for myself. So it's like, sometimes, you know, we have to have these fierce conversations with ourselves to really be honest, tell the truth, and hold ourselves accountable. Because I think, and this is what was happening, and I'm going to share with you what what was going on for me, but it's like we tell ourselves this story about how hard we're working. I'm eating good. I'm making good choices. I'm tracking everything. But it's like, what are are you really like? Is that is that really what you're doing? Is that really the truth? And when you start to uncover that, a lot of times it's not the truth. It's like, well, you know, I did have this cupcake over here and well, I had this indulgent, you know, so that's really what we're talking about today is I want to bring it home with, are you really holding yourself accountable with your weight loss? 
Okay. So for me, I told myself in January, listen, we have almost a hundred pounds to lose. That's the truth, guys. Okay. I have almost a hundred pounds to lose. I gained 60 pounds with my son. I gained 70 pounds with my daughter. And I was able to lose all of that except for about 10 pounds, like five to 10 pounds. And I never gained any of it back in three years. And then I got pregnant last year. And my body type is just going to gain the weight. And that's fine. I'm done having kids. I literally have no reason to ever gain weight again, ever. Okay. But I have close to 100 pounds that I want to lose. And that feels like shit. That feels overwhelming. That almost feels impossible. And because of how far I need to go, and because I've made this promise to myself, this is the last time we're doing this. <laughs> this, this, is, this is literally the last time. You know, and here's, here's something I want you guys to understand Yes, this is going to be the last time I lose my weight. But I want to be very clear that just because you lose your weight and you get to your goal, it doesn't mean you get to go back to doing what you were doing. And that's one of the big differences that I know now that many years ago I didn't realize. Okay, I thought I could get to goal and then just do whatever the hell I wanted to do all over again doesn't work that way it's also the reason why I will not lose weight doing bullshit fad stuff because I'm not coming back here every decade of weight that I lose bye bye see you I'm not coming back so don't wait for me (laughs) like we're not coming back this is it um and so I had told myself in January you know you've had a hard couple of months you were in survival mode You were just eating whatever you needed to eat because you weren't even think like I was so zombie mode into like I was zombie walking my ass through it. Like, let's be real. And um, in January, I said, "Okay, let's just like be accountable. Let's just write the shit down. Let's not even worry about. Is this good? Should I be eating this? Is this healthy? Is this going to be in my points range? Because I am doing Weight Watcher points. Um, That works really well for me in in terms of having accountability, parameters, you know, all the things. For right now, that's, that's what works for me. And I had just told myself, like, you know, let's just write the stuff down. And let's just look at what are you even doing with your food? Because, and and here's the reason for that. Because when you just do it in your head and you're like, oh, I'm having a great points day or I'm having a good food day, all those little BLTs, bite, licks, and what do they call it? Bite, licks, and tastes, they go out the window. You don't put those, you don't, you're not writing that down. You're not thinking about that. So then you're telling yourself, oh yeah, I'm putting in the work, girl. Like, mm, okay. So that's why for me, I was like, okay, we just have to start, like, let's just face reality right now and let's just start writing down what we're eating. So we can see how much food am I actually consuming and then where can I start to make tweaks? Because the one thing I'm not going to do is I'm not going to go hard, all in, hustle, this has to be hard, this has to be painful. We have to do things in baby steps. If you really want this for the rest of your life and not just for the cruise that's coming up in July, we have to do this in a way that is creating habits and that is creating change for the rest of your life and so that was what I decided to do I was like I'm just gonna start tracking and see like what am I eating what am I what am I even consuming on a daily basis okay and the first week that I was really back to like okay I'm tracking all my food I'm starting to get my steps in again we're doing our walks um I was down seven pounds and in my mind 
I only think like three of those were real weight loss because the scale had actually been up by four pounds just from the weekend. And I think it's because I over ate and binged on the weekend. But anyway, the scale said I was down seven pounds. Okay. So the second week that I did this, um, which the week just ended um, as I'm recording this, the second week that I was really paying attention to this, the scale says I gained a pound. And I was just feeling so pissed off. I was pissed off. I was like, why is this so hard for me? I'm tracking all my food. I'm back in the game. I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. The scale can't be up. This is ridiculous. Like, And I was just going into the woe is me pity party of the year. I'm a victim. Everything is horrible. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. And I had to really rein that in because here's the reality. Here's something I want you as like a takeaway. The facts and the truth, the hard, cold facts will Always remove the emotion around your bullshit story. Let's say that again. The facts will always remove the emotion from your bullshit story you tell yourself. Because the bullshit story I was telling myself is, I'm tracking all my food. I should be losing weight. It's like, yeah, the truth is, I'm tracking all my food. Am I staying in my daily points range? Definitely not. And I'm going to share some reality with you guys. Like, definitely not in my points range. So why would you expect to see results? And I think we do this a lot in weight loss where we think we're doing everything the quote-unquote right way. But we're cheating ourselves a little bit here, a little bit there. This won't hurt. I'll just have a little bit extra here. And then tomorrow I'm going to rein it in. But then tomorrow you don't rein it in. And... I know if I continue this pattern, if I continue this pattern, not only will I not lose the weight, I'm going to end up gaining a shit ton more weight because I know myself and I know my body and I know how my body works. So this is why you guys, yes, your portions matter the what you're eating matters, how you're moving your body matters, but it's such a small piece of this weight loss pie. If you don't learn how to identify the thoughts and the conversations you're having with yourself about yourself, you're going to be in this struggle for the rest of your life. You just will. And so, you know, as I saw that the scale wasn't going down, it was going up, This thought kept running through my mind for the last couple of weeks, actually, and I couldn't shake it. And the thought was, holy shit, holy shit, you are in for the fight of your life. This is going to be the hardest weight loss journey of your life. And that just kept running and running and running, and it kept saying, this is... Oh, and it was just this devastating, like, oh my God, this is the fight of your life. This is going to be the hardest thing you ever have to do. And you've got a long fight ahead of you. Because I was thinking, you're putting in all the work. You're tracking all your food. And the scale isn't moving. It's actually going up. This, so I kept thinking, if I have one little, and and this is the story I was telling myself, oh my God, if I have one cheat day, the scale goes back up. I can't believe this. This has never happened to me before. It's never been this hard for me. It's never been easy for me, but it's never been this hard. And that right there, those statements, those thoughts, that's the problem because they're not true. And that is why I tell you guys, if you don't learn how to do thought work and drop the emotional weight that you're putting and you're carrying with you, you won't be able to lose the real weight. You just won't. 
So last night, after the kids were all asleep, I just decided, okay, what are we doing here? It's like, I, I, I excuse the phrase because I really don't like this phrase, but I don't know what else to say here. It really is like, shit or get off the pot. What are you doing here? What are you doing? Because here's what I know. If I continue to think that I'm doing everything right and I'm really not staying in my points range and I'm really not putting in the work how I know I need to be putting in the work, it's the end of January, <laughs> believe it or not. Less than two months from now, at least where I live, it's going to be hot. And we're going to be open in our pool. And we're going to be going to the beach. And I'm not going to have a bathing suit that fits. And I won't even want to put on my bathing suit because I'm probably not going to like what I see. And I know I'm going to... It's like that moment of standing in front of the mirror and putting on your summer clothes after it's been winter and you've been hiding in your leggings and nothing fits and you feel devastated and you don't understand why this happened to you. I don't do that anymore because I'm awake and I'm conscious to what I'm doing. And I know if I keep going, well, a little bit of this, a little bit of that, this won't hurt. That's where I'm going to be. And I'm going to be upset and I'm going to be miserable and I'm going to be mad at myself. And that's not how I want to show up in the world. That's not how I want to do this. So it really is shit or get off the pot. What are you doing? You either want, it's like there's this meme. and I know a lot of people don't like it, but it's the truth. It's like pick your heart. Pick your heart. Weight loss is hard. Being so overweight you feel uncomfortable is even harder. So which one is it? And telling yourself you don't have time is the dumbest excuse I can like think of. Because you're already eating every day. How do you not have time to just make better choices? So anyway, I decided last night, like, all right. Let's be real and let's be honest and let's actually go back. And the whole reason for doing this tracking thing was so that I could even analyze with facts. Remember, facts remove the emotion around the bullshit you're telling yourself. Because most of the bullshit you're telling yourself is emotions that you're creating. Okay. So I was like, all right, let's go back and look. This is why we did this kind of like this experiment of like, let's just track the food. So I went into my tracker, okay, and with my Weight Watchers, I get 28 points a day plus my weeklies. Let me just, just to give you an example of, of what's been going on with your girl, on Tuesday of last week, we're talking a Tuesday, Tuesdays for me are boring. My husband is at work all night. I have dinner alone with my daughter. Typically, her and I don't even eat the same things. Tuesday is just a monotonous day of work, take care of the kids, put them to bed, get up and do it again the next day. There is nothing exciting going on here. We're not partying. We're not going clubbing. We're not living it up on Tuesdays, okay? So let's just put that in perspective. Your girl used... 81 points, 81, <laughs> 81 effing points, you guys, so here's where it went, so so here's, here's the thing, this is why you have to look yourself in the eye and hold yourself accountable, because a lot of times in weight loss, denial and weight loss, weight gain are like BFFs. So as long as you're in denial, you're not going to be willing to face the facts. And so you're going to live in the emotions that you're creating. And so then you end up creating all these bullshit stories about what you're doing when you're not really doing it. Okay. So it's like, yeah, I tracked my food. But okay, so let me, and I'm going to go back and share with you like what I did. So like last week, Monday, 47, Tuesday, 81, Wednesday, 54 points. Thursday, 38 points. Let's get to Friday. Friday, 54 points on Friday. 
Saturday, 48 points, and we didn't even track our dinner on Saturday. <laughs> my gosh. And then Sunday, I didn't even do my tracking on Sunday. And I know Sunday was, you know, whatever. So, <laughs> like, how can I have a week like that and actually expect, that's some entitled bullshit right there. That, okay, <laughs> I have no problem calling myself out on my own stuff because that's how we grow and that's how we change. One of the things we talk about on the podcast and definitely inside of the coaching program is the entitled fat girl mindset. And the entitled fat girl mindset is, I had a hard day. I'm really stressed out. I deserve to have this food. And if I want it, I'm going to have it now. That's part of it. The other part of it is like, I'm tracking my food and I'm trying to make an effort here and I'm not losing weight. This is so hard for me and I'm in for the fight of my life. That right there is some entitled bullshit of me thinking, oh, okay, girl, you're going to be having these 80 point days, 50 point days, and you really think the scale's supposed to go down. That is some entitled shit right there. <laughs> like, let's just call it what it is. Okay, and to have this drama around I'm in for the fight of my life, it's like you're not even putting your gloves on yet and you're over here talking about you're in the fight of your life. So one of the things you have to be willing to do if you really want to make this weight loss journey the last weight loss journey and you want to keep the weight off and you want to lose the emotional weight too, you've got to learn how to hold yourself accountable and to call yourself out on your own bullshit. And that's where I was at. So I'm thinking, yeah, like, please explain to me how the scale could possibly go down when I'm over here having 80-point days, 50-point days, 60-point days. That is insane. To where it says for me, if I look at my tracker for last week, hang on. No, that's this week. Hang on. I'm in the negative 50-something points, and I didn't even track everything on the weekend. (laughs) So if you, you know, and that's why I'm telling you guys, weight loss is real simple. Eat less, move more. It's a science. It's It's a numbers and science game. You eat less, you move more, you compute the points or the calories, whatever it is you're doing, and you're gonna lose the weight. You will never lose the weight when you're stuck in your own bullshit. You will never lose the weight when you're telling yourself a story that isn't the truth. You will never lose the weight when you have these self-defeating thoughts that actually aren't the truth. Straight up. So, you know, I had to, you know, I, I practice what I preach and I put my own principles and my own strategies to work here. And I'm like, okay, let's, let's analyze this thought that I'm having. The thought of I'm in for the fight of my life. Is that true? Is that the truth? Okay. Cause when we go, I have a whole strategy that we teach inside the program It's called the own it strategy. And one of the things that we ask ourselves is like, is this the truth? No, it's not the truth. That's a thought. It's not the truth. I'm in for the fight of my life. Because here's the reality about that. That statement is very dramatic. That statement is so charged with emotion. Like negative, nasty, hard emotion. And it's dramatic. And when I say that statement... It makes me want to quit before I even start. So the way that you work with stuff like that is to put truth to the test. Again, truth removes the emotion around the bullshit story you're telling yourself. So here's the truth. Yeah, I've gained weight. I just had a baby and I gained a lot of weight with this pregnancy and it's not just going away. That's the truth. I'm here. This is where I'm at. And guess what? 
This isn't the fight of your life because you've done this before, which means you know what to do. You're just not doing it. So when you have these thoughts that come across your brain, it's like you have to ask yourself, is this the truth? And if it's not, what is the truth? It's like, yeah, this does suck. I don't want to have to do this again, but this is where I'm at. I also don't want to have to gain weight and feel miserable in my own skin. I don't want to be there. I'd much rather do this and start taking better care of myself again. So, because here's the reality, guys, is that the thoughts that you have create the emotions. So the example of, oh, I'm in for the fight of my life with this weight loss journey. The emotion that created for me is dread. I don't want to do this. I don't want to have to do this again. This sucks. I don't want to do this. This is hard. This feels so hard for me. And when it feels hard and it feels dramatic and it feels like it's never going to happen, guess what? Your emotions drive your actions. And my actions are, I don't want to do this, so I'm not going to do it. And so as a result, I'm over my limit every single day, which means the scale is actually going up. But then I want to be in denial about why it's going up. <laughs> See? Um, so it's like you've got to take these thoughts and put them down on paper and put truth to them. Because for me, the other thought that was running through my mind and I kept saying it to myself, is like, especially when I look in the mirror naked, I would say, this pregnancy wrecked. I kept saying, my, even my husband's like, what is with you saying the word wrecked lately? Because <laughs> I just kept saying it. I'm like, this pregnancy wrecked me. It wrecked my body. I mean, it completely wrecked my body. I don't remember this happening with my first child. I don't remember my stomach hanging. Like, I... Mm, this is going to be another episode, y'all. When I see these women complaining about their uh, after the baby C-section tummy, how it's hanging, I'm like, no, bitch. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. No, 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 no. And they show like this little teeny tiny roll. And I'm like, my stomach is actually hanging. Hanging. I don't remember it this bad with my daughter. And so I kept telling myself, this pregnancy has wrecked you. Your body is so wrecked. That's not a nice thing to tell yourself. That doesn't feel good. And, and so again, that thought doesn't bring up pleasant emotions for anybody. It brings up disgust, hate, um, just it, it's not pleasant. And then... What do you do when you feel that way? You start beating yourself up. You start not taking care of yourself. It's like thoughts, emotions, actions, right? So again, I had to sit down and say, what's the truth? Is my body actually wrecked? No. Sure, I gained 60 pounds. I gained a lot more weight than your textbook pregnancy, and I did with both of my kids. But my body gained that weight because apparently that's what it needed to do to bring my son into this world perfectly healthy and happy. This is what my body had to do. My son is here. My son is alive. He's healthy. And I have the rest of my life to now get my body the way I want it, to get the weight off. So you have to start putting facts to the emotion, right? You just have to do that. And the other facts around that is like, okay, because I kept telling myself I wasn't this wrecked after Catalina. It's like you also weren't four years older after Catalina. You're four years older than you were when she was born. You also were 10 pounds heavier than you were with her. This is also your second C-section. So it is going to do more to your body than it did the first time. 
because not only just the extra weight from carrying the baby, but having a C-section, you get like the C-section shelf. It's a thing. Yeah, you now have it twice, which is also why it actually took longer to get him out because of the scar tissue that was inside. That are, that are Those things are facts. I'm older. I weighed more. This is my second C-section. So my body looks differently. Do you see how the facts put out the fire? They still don't feel good. I don't love the fact that my stomach is hanging. I'm not happy about it at all. But there's a difference between, oh, my body is just wrecked. Oh, that's some victim stuff right there versus, okay, here's what happened. And to also be like having the gratitude around whatever your your particular situation is. But like for me, I got my son out of that. And that's everything to me. My children are everything to me. Right? So I keep saying it. The facts will always remove the hot, passionate, fiery emotions around the bullshit story you tell yourself. And the facts are how you hold yourself accountable. Looking at your daily food journal, those are facts. Those aren't emotions. Those are facts. This is what I ate. Because, again, actual physical weight loss is very transactional. It's very factual. (laughs) But where it gets tricky is all the emotional stuff that we're not dealing with, that we're not talking about. Because the stuff that we're talking about here, this isn't stuff that, you know, Weight Watchers is going to teach you or any other diet program is going to teach you. They're not teaching you this stuff. They're not teaching you how to have these conversations. And these conversations are absolutely critical to your success. Because if you don't, have these conversations and put facts to the emotions, you will always lose weight out of desperation. You will always try to find the next shiny fad diet and lose weight out of hustle and desperation. And hustle and desperation is not going to give you a life that you want. It's going to get you to your goal But it's going to get you to your goal temporarily until the next disaster comes along or tragedy or or hard time. And then you're right back to where you started from. How many times have you told yourself or have you heard yourself say things like, "I, I remember back in 1997, I lost 60 pounds and then I got divorced. And then I got divorced. And and you make it sound like the circumstance caused your weight gain. Just like for me, having postpartum preeclampsia, the spinal headaches, all the the complications I had after the baby, that stuff didn't cause the weight gain. My emotions caused me to zone out and gain the weight. And I'm also going to be a little bit softer on myself about that too because it's 10 pounds. I gained 60 from the baby. I gained 10 during that time frame when I had already lost. What I had lost after the um, procedures, I gained back 10 of it. So that's the other thing. How harsh are you being with yourself? And the reality is it's 10 pounds. It's 10 pounds you've been bouncing around while all that was going on. And when you have a lot going on in your life, like that, give yourself some grace. Because sometimes, again, all you can do, you're just so stuck in the weeds and you're just trying to survive and get through the day. So anyway, that's what it's about, guys, is that we have to hold ourselves accountable. And so here's my takeaway, and this is what I'm working on this week, and if you want to work on that this week, amazing. You don't have to. Um, We're all at different points in our journey. But for me this week, the plan is this. 
we're not just tracking anymore to see where we're at. <laughs> like I did the work. I did my tracking for two solid weeks. I tracked everything for the most part. And that's the results that I had. I mean, 80 point days on a Tuesday night. And that's the thing, right? It's like, let me just say this. You, There was even a 100 point day, guys. Like when I was going, yeah, here it is. This was a Thursday night a couple weeks ago, a Thursday, and I had 100 daily points used. So my breakfast starts out great. I eat the same things every day for breakfast. Um, And if you want me to share like what I'm eating or that kind of stuff, please leave a comment in the Facebook group or on Instagram and let me know if that's content that you would like to see. But every day, for the most part, I eat the same thing every morning and it's very healthy. It's very like within range. Then my lunch, I had a 24 point lunch and I'm eating at I was cooking at home. (laughs) I made a burger with some sweet potato fries and that was 24 points okay for dinner I had a 28 point dinner oh my god like just out of control out of control here's where things are really just my total snacks for the day are 38 points in snacks (laughs) like what the f 38 points of snacks when my snack, my daily, my daily range total is 28. (laughs) Like I, like I just cannot with myself. I just cannot. So it's like, let's tell the real story that's going on here, right? So the real story for me is I decided every day I was going to track what I was eating, no matter what I was eating. So I could then analyze Where can I do better? Where can I make tweaks? And somewhere along the way, I forgot that that's what I was doing because I thought, in my mind, I changed the story of like, well, I'm just having little cheats here and there. I should still be losing weight. It should still come off because I have... My thought process was this. I have so much weight to lose. It should be easy to get it off at the beginning. What? Like I mind blown that this is the thoughts that I'm having. So this is how we change. This is how we make progress is we get really crystal clear with ourselves and hold ourselves accountable to what the truth is. Because now what I was able to do is I went back through my whole journal, my whole, um, I do everything here on the app, the Weight Watchers app. I went back through all of my my days. So for example, (laughs) the 100 point day, we're like, wow, okay, 100 point day. And I'm saying, okay, where could this, where could I do better here? Obviously, we need to get the snacks under control. Number one, we need to do less snacking. And we need to find snacks that are less points and more nutritious. Because actually, everything on my snack thing isn't even unhealthy. Let me tell you, I had a perfect bar, which is a protein bar. Um, Those are 11 points each, and I had two of them that day. (laughs) I had some cheese cubes, some heart-healthy trail mix from Orchard Valley. Okay, we had some more cheese bites, and we had dark chocolate hummus. All of those things are great choices, all of them. They're all amazing, healthy, clean choices, things that I plan on eating for the rest of my life. I don't eat these things because I feel like I have to. I have to rein it in with my portions. That for me is 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 the kicker here is I had way too much of everything. And so that's what you do is you go and you look at, this is why it's important to journal and to write things down and to look the truth in the eyes and stop living in denial in your brain. Because your brain will always create the story that you're doing everything right. Your brain will always create the story that you're the victim. Your brain will always tell you that you're doing everything like you're supposed to. And it's just everything's working against you. No. 
I can't be mad that this, and honestly, the scale should be up more than a pound, <laughs> right? Like, I can't be mad about that when I'm not putting in the work, when my actions aren't reflecting my desires, okay? So that's just a really good exercise is like to go through this and see, okay, here's where I'm going to do better next time. Here's where I can make some of these changes. Um, and I mean, every single day for weeks now, I have exceeded my, my goal, my points. So here's another one that Tuesday night I was telling you guys about earlier in the episode. So my breakfast was great. It was seven points. I have a light multi-grain English muffin with a little smear of peanut butter. I have my egg beaters with my laughing cow cheese, and that's it. Seven points. And it's filling, and it's good. For lunch, I had myself a 20-point lunch. And here's what I had. I had a roast beef and cheese sandwich with some baked ruffles chips. Those are good choices, I think. And then I had a six-point Clio Greek yogurt bar, another one of those snacks I snuck in there. So, you know, there's some tweaks here I can make to get some of these down a little bit, but I think overall that's okay. Um, And then for dinner, my dinner was 25 points. So I had made this shrimp and lobster ravioli. Um, They sell it at Walmart in the deli. It's actually very good. One serving was nine points. Not bad. Um, I just tossed mine with a little bit of fresh mozzarella and olive oil. I don't use like um, pasta sauce on it. Well, the bag is only has like two, I think two servings in it. And I told you guys, my husband's not here for dinner during the weekdays because he works nights and my daughter was eating something different and I ended up eating both servings <laughs> for 18 points um, and so I had that with the mozzarella the olive oil and a slice of bread which I could have cut the bread 25 points that's way too high um, and then here again is where we need to make tweaks I had 29 points in snacks and hello let's be let's keep it honest let's keep it real Two of those things on my snacks were cupcakes. I had cupcakes left over from my mom's birthday. So here I am over here eating some cupcakes, having cheats here and there, 30 30 points of snacks a day, and wondering why the scale's not going down. Well, gee, I wonder, girl. Like, because you're not telling yourself the truth. You're not telling yourself the truth. So I'm so happy that I did this exercise where I just started tracking so I could then go back and see what's going on. Because here's the reality. Here, here's the deal. If I didn't track the food, okay, if I didn't track my food, I was telling myself, I'm in for the fight of my life. I'm doing everything the way I'm supposed to do. I'm eating healthy. That wasn't the truth. And if I didn't have the facts here to back myself up, I would want to just throw the towel in and be done with it because I think I'm putting in the work and I'm not seeing the results. And the reality is you're not actually putting in the work (laughs) at all, (laughs) at all. So don't ever be afraid to write things down and to tell yourself the truth because that's how you're going to grow and that's how you're going to change. If you want to live in your head, you're going to continue to live in denial And you're going to continue to create these thoughts that aren't true. And when you have these thoughts that are coming up for you, I want you to write those down just like I'm doing. And I want you to write them down and I want you to put truth to them. Take the emotion away by putting the facts to it. Facts and data, again, will always remove the emotion around the story you tell yourself. So what are the facts? What are the things that are true? And what are the things that are not true? And this isn't going to happen in one conversation. I'm going to continue to have these conversations with myself forever, forever, especially through this weight loss journey. But this is how it happens. So the weight, listen, It might take longer to lose the weight, 
But look at the things that you're going to learn and adapt if you do it this way. So yeah, I could have I I could sit here and beat myself up and be like, "Well, it's the end of January, you should be down 10 pounds already." And the truth is like yeah, but this is an exercise that I needed to do. And this is why I tell you guys, I say it in so many episodes, please throw your timelines away. Please throw your weight loss timelines away, your self-imposed weight loss timelines away. Because if you want this to be the last time, then you need to actually invest your time into doing the things that are going to make long-lasting changes. Sure, it's amazing that you can now drink water, you know, 100 ounces of water a day and you made that change. That is something you need to be doing. But that is not going to sustain you the rest of your life the way you need, like the way that this thought work and this emotional weight can. This is the stuff you've got to get under control. And you're the only one stopping you. You are literally the only person standing between this is hard. Like that 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 intersection of I don't want to do this. This is hard. And you know what? Gaining back all the weight is hard too. You're the only person standing in the way of that intersection. So what are you going to do? What is your choice? What are you going to decide to do from here on? So what I'm doing this week, um, again, I know I kind of derailed there a little bit, but my, my plan this week is to stay in my points range every single day for seven days. For seven days, starting today, this is Monday, my goal is to not go outside of my points. Um, and that means my dailies and my weekly. So if I need to use a couple extra for my for my weekly, that's fine because I was going in the deficit like 50, 60 points. <laughs> and my goal this week is to not do that, is to stay within range. And here's how we do that. We cannot plan our weight our weight loss in the hard moments. So if you're going into your day not knowing what the hell you're going to eat today, you're setting yourself up to fail. So what I'm doing is every single night, I'm going into my weight loss tracker, my Weight Watchers tracker, and I am putting in my food for the next day. I'm not tracking in the moment anymore. I'm going in and saying, I already know I'm going to have this for breakfast. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, what do I want to have for lunch tomorrow? That's within range. Boom, boom, boom. What do I want to have for dinner tomorrow? Boom. I even put in one of my snacks that I'm going to have. My One of my mid-morning snacks is I've now moved my English muffin with the peanut butter. Instead of having it for breakfast and then having another snack, I've moved that to my mid-morning snack. So I'm making these small adjustments and these small tweaks. And so then what I do is I put all my food in there. So for example, for today, um, I have already um, journaled 25 points. And I have four left over. So I get 29 a day. I said 20. I get 29 a day. I have four points left to use however I want to use. So now that's how you do the snacking. It's like, okay, I have four points left. I could have some zero point stuff like my fruit and vegetables, uh, maybe with some hummus dip. But now I have four points that I feel like I'm now in control of. Because what I was doing before is I was just eating and then putting it in the tracker. And that doesn't work. So I'm planning the night before. Because here's the deal. We can do anything for one day. You can do anything for one day. So what are you going to do for just today? And my goal is to do that every single day this week, including the weekend. And then I'm going to see what my results are. And then, and then I have an honest, honest review of, okay, you're starting to actually put in the real work here. And what's happening? Are you getting results? Are you feeling better? Because it's not just about the scale. Are you feeling better? Because when you start eating less and you start being more like portion controlling and you start eating cleaner, your your body physically starts to feel better too. And so that's what I'm going to do. And I'll share that with you guys. Um, 
And here's here's what I was thinking, and I'm not sure what you think about this, so you can comment in the group or on Instagram, send me a DM, um, at Irresistible Icing. I was wondering if I should start doing like a weekly weigh-in podcast episode. So so we keep our our weekly episode where we have a topic that we dive into and we teach and you learn and all that kind of stuff. But then we also have like a weekly weigh-in where I share with you exactly what I'm doing, how much I weigh, where the scale went down, what were my um, successes for the week, where could I have done better, would that be helpful to you? Because I have almost 100 pounds to lose and I want to document it. I want to share it with you guys from like the reality because it's not all I went down this week. I went down this week like there's ups and downs and I want to be able to share that. So let me know if a weekly weight law, a weekly weigh in episode would be helpful for you. Let me know that. Um, But yeah, that's it, guys. So this week, the message, the 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 lesson here is is you have to start holding yourself accountable with your weight loss. And are you doing that? Are you really telling yourself the truth? Are you telling yourself the truth? And I'm going to say it one more time. The facts and the truth will always remove the emotion around the bullshit story you tell yourself. Let's continue this conversation inside of the free Irresistible You Facebook group. You can also keep up and connect with me over on Instagram at Irresistible Icing. If this was helpful to you, if you love the podcast, please head over to iTunes and leave a rating and review. That would mean so much to me. And until the next time, stay irresistible. Bye, guys.